Okay, how are we all doing? I hope everyone's keeping well out there. So I did something I probably shouldn't have done at the weekend there. And, uh, I went out and I bought another bloody television. So, I don't know. Uh, we do these things. I woke up uh, Sunday morning and I was just sort of looking at my phone as you do. Uh, half asleep. And um, a search alert came over. <laughs> and um, it was a TV. So I bought the TV and went and collected it. It's a bit rough, and I don't know if it's going to be a viable uh, prospect or not, but we're going to have a look at it. It's this one here. It's um, a 23 inch Poi, dual standard. Uh, no UHF tuner though, uh, Ireland. Um, some did. I actually had the same model TV in a table version, um, 23 inch as well. And that has a UHF tuner, but we'll talk about that later. Um, it's a bit rough, probably paid more than I should have, but yeah, whatever, we do these things. So we're going to see if we can get it going. I want to see first light on it, because I don't know how good the tube is in it. Um, so I want to see something on the screen before I do any more with it. So for the last, um, let's see, this is Thursday, so for three, four days, Monday, Monday I put the power supply on the line output transformer to dry out the overwind. I've talked about that before in previous videos um, to drive out the, the dampness that um, accumulates inside the windings in the line output transformer um, over you know 40 50 years this wouldn't be so much of a problem when the TV is in service but when they're lying up for maybe 20 or 30 or 40 years in a shed which this one probably has been and um, the damp gets into the windings they're only covered in a sort of a pitch wax tar and um, it's hygroscopic so it soaks in the water so it just helps it gives it gives the line output transformer a fighting chance if you, if you dry them out this way i didn't come up with this idea people are a lot, better, a lot smarter than me did but it is an excellent way of drying out line output transformers instead of faffing about removing them and putting them into ovens and, and all this kind of crap um you can leave the transformer in situ and you don't need to put a solid iron near it i've been warned by a couple of uh, uh, seasoned TV restores that you know the, the wires are so fine on the line output transformers you should avoid putting a solder iron anywhere near them unless it's absolutely necessary because um, you can end up burning the little wires and what have you and then you're, you're into serious problems you can get line output transformers rewound but it's 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 not something you really want to be getting into because it's quite expensive and in a case like this it um, it wouldn't be viable because the TV just wouldn't be worth it Anyway, having said all that, we're going to have a look at the tube with the tester first. Um, and then we're going to just mind the setup on the Verdiac, see what it does. Um, I'll bring the camera in and we'll have a look at the tube tester. Um, and we'll talk a bit about testing tubes, I think. So, I have here my... Well, John's uh, CRT Regenerator by Koenig, TR450. I don't have any operating instructions with this, but from over the years of using it, I have an idea what to expect w when I'm using it. So, um, colour tubes generally uh, have a higher emission than black and white ones with this tester. Um, however, it's not great at testing black and white tubes. But it, it does work to an extent. So we have the, the, the doofer on here. And we can see that the tube is lit up. Now a couple of YouTubers, um, Shango66 and a few others talk about, you know, if the, if the inside of the neck of the tube is black, it's a high hour set. And I agree with that. And this one is, you can see, you can see that the shininess here. This isn't a getter or that, and this is um, ions escaping and, and, and getting, sorry. This is ions escaping and, and sticking to the glass and blackening the glass. So if you see one that's really black, um, you know, it's a high hour set. But that's not the end of the world. They can be like that and they can still have perfectly good emission. Anyway, tester's on. We can see the heater is lit. Can we see the heater? Yes, we can see that the heater is lit. And we have the tester here. So here we are with the G, G1 voltage here and... If we just turn this knob that way, 
we can see that the emission is uh, it's, it's improved i've had it on for a while the heaters have been on for about maybe an hour or two and at the start we were barely moving the needle but now we're coming up a, a decent bit um and that is just about enough it doesn't look great but that should give us something on the screen um i have a leader tester here as well which i was trying but um i got this a couple of weeks ago off a chap uh, a decent decent man but um it doesn't appear to be working correctly i tried um using this and it's 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 not working um it's working with colour tubes, so I think there's a broken wire in the loom or whatever. It's a little bit messy the way they do it. Um, so anyway, we'll look at that at a later date and talk about it. So, that's the tube. Now I have another tube here, which we'll just try for comparison. This is a Mazda uh, CME 1703. And this is a bit of a mission left in it. I got this out with scrap set a while ago, and I held on to it. So we'll, we'll, we're going to put that on the test and we'll see how that reads. Okay, so we have this Mazda CME 1703 here. And we've had it on for maybe five minutes. Um, I like to leave them for a few minutes before I go near them. Just to make sure that the, the, the heater is hot. And that the, the cathode has uh, gotten up to temperature. And it can take a while. Um, and especially with a tube that hasn't been on for a while. They seem to take a little bit longer. So here we are. And I'll swing the the, um, the G1 voltage on this and we can see how it uh, compares to the, the tube in the TV. As you can see, that's quite strong. And that will give an excellent picture at that. Um, so, there's nothing wrong there. So you can see how the two compare. The tube in this reads pretty weak. But I wouldn't let that write it off yet. I see a lot of people where they put a tube tester like this or the leader or whatever onto a TV that hasn't seen power in maybe 40 years and whack it on, push the button, ah, oh, it's dead and they just write off the tube. Well, the only real way of testing a CRT in my opinion is to see a picture on it. I have a 24 inch Pi um, one, one. I can't remember the model number. It's gone out of my head. Anyway, it's a um, early seventies um, single standard uh, six two five line UHF TV. It's twenty four inch, and the tube in it on this tester reads zero emission, nothing at all, but it displays a perfect picture. No flaring, no focus issue. Lovely contrasted picture, and I'm, I'll have to dig it out of storage and show you. So, I wouldn't let a, a CRT tester um, write off a tube. If you can get some sort of picture on the TV, get the TV walking to some sort of, uh, you know, uh, to see if you can see anything on the CRT. And if you can't, then, well, then you know it's not uh, viable going forward. It was probably all right back in the day. Where you could throw a tube in the bin, although they were very expensive, but um, you could always bring it to a regunner or whatever. We don't have that option anymore. So, and even if there was someone regunning tubes now, I don't think it'd be uh, financially viable for the kind of sets that we're doing here. Anyway, having said all that, and I've talked enough nonsense about CRTs and my opinion, which isn't worth a lot, but whatever. Um, We'll have a, a sort of a look at the TV. I can't put it on the bench because it's too tall. Um, anyway, we can see the face of the TV there. The UHF knob down there. We're missing the knob. And then there's two blanks here. Now on the other one, I think the top one is a tone control. And this is a UHF tuner. Um, and believe it or not, the UHF tuner on the other set is there. But it's just a small knob like that. And there's no numbers or anything on it. You just twist the knob and if you find a station, all oh well and good. The nuts holding the CRT into the cabinet are loose. And we can see that the plywood is showing. So I don't know if the tube has changed at some stage. 
and it's quite likely that a, a duffer tube was put into the set um, and a good tube taken out for another set um, which could happen it's full of hunts the other one had this too these hunts plastic caps they're red not black they're usually black these ones are red and you can see that they're cracked all of those will need to go in the bin um, and we can see it's had a, a few little repairs there nice and taste really done and um, the sets had a hard life obviously um, and we can see it's, it's full of this weird red dust so I don't know what that is but um, it's almost like a red brick dust there's a good layer of that in it so we'll check the we're going to try and power it up now so I have the little fluke meter here just measuring the HT coming onto the uh, reservoir cap and we'll keep an eye on that um, I'll just check the uh, tags here to see what we're setting we'll go for the the highest voltage setting which will be 230 to 240 which is um, well let's see the full of the pipe it makes sense it? let's see where are we one two three four five six so where do we put the tags i suppose he should be on four or yeah up to four because he's just clipping onto himself so you have the the full length of the dropper and then the other one will be one so where was it set it was set for five and three Ooh. sort of 200 to 210 so someone's being given the set a hard time probably due to the crt so she's been running hard anyway we'll try and give it a, an easier life here and wind it up um i have the aurora here as well if we need it but um, we're not going to get too involved with that yet. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pause here. I'll, uh, I'll set the thing up. And then we'll give it a wind up and see what it does. Um, if we see something on the screen and it looks viable. We'll go ahead and do a bit of a job on it at some stage. We'll have a few things to get out of the way here first. But I just want to know is this going to be a goer or not. Okay, here we are. Um, I've turned off the light so we can see the valves light up and what have you. I've checked the continuity in the main switch. It's good. The switch is on and it's halfway. The main switch is uh, tied in with the volume control. The volume control is halfway up. So I'm going to switch on down at this plug here. And um, start winding it up. I'm not going to be too slow about winding it up. I've talked before in other videos about reform electrolytics or whatever i think if they if, if they don't more or less come up straight away then they're fecked so we'll see what happens anyway and um we'll go from there so i'm going for broke and uh so we might see a few sparks and bangs and stuff which is always entertaining as well right let's go for it now we have to get down on the ground here with the bare yak uh, I can just about see the uh, multimeter there saying there, 28 volts, but you know, it's winding up. Leave it there for a few seconds just to give the heaters a chance to catch up.
had about 100 volts, 140 volts input this stage and um, we can see a faint low in the in the neck of the tube so we know that uh, we've heat our continuity throughout the circuit because the CRT is at the end of the chain so if he's lighting up all the heater should be good Tens period, all right. Let's see, nothing's gone bang or pop yet, so we're looking good. I hear the line output stage just cracked into life there. There we go. That sounds lovely. Oh, and we've uh, already got action on the tube as well. well let's get the phone out and we'll just have a, a look and see what's going on. Um, that's a good start. I don't have a mirror, but I'm afraid I don't, so I'll have to apologise for that. But, um, right, I'll wind up another bit. We'll go for it now. About 240 there, input with 240 volt DC HT. That's a nice first light to get. Nothing is overheating. Nothing sounds stressed. That's quite surprising actually because I thought um, looking at the set and the work that has been done to it in the past I thought we were going to be in for a bit of a a bit of a time. Um, we'll get the camera here again and have another squint at the front. That's a good start. We won't fall out with that. Then, as you can see, nothing is smoking, nothing is going bang on us. No coronary sounds from the um, uh, EHT areas. All is well so far. That's that's actually very surprising, considering all things taken into account. Let's give the uh, channel a and the RF stages are uh, alive as well. It just goes to show, so far, we haven't seen a proper test card on it yet, but so far we're looking good with regards to tube. So, that's what I was saying about look, uh, CRT testers. That looks fairly bright to me. Right, I'm going to pause it here and I'll hook up the Aurora. Okay, I have the Aurora hooked up and we're plugged in, so we're going to give it a go. Don't hear any sound. Oh, there's sound some description all right um, Yeah, 
That's not to say that the biscuits are the tuna are out of the as well. So we can get out and I've got two goals around the clock. So we have a good connection here. Pause it here and see if I can get do something with that. I'll give the valves and the tuner a little waggle around in case they're uh, dirty. Okay, so we have uh, a test car now, and this is it, which isn't bad for first light. And overloading a bit but there's certainly enough life left in that shell uh, to, to give a very watchable picture indeed so. and of course with a bit of use it'll wake up a bit now the crack was I'll just turn that down I set the um, the main dropper for its highest setting and I was feeding this set 230 AC so I wound it up another little bit to 250 and then the, the test card came in. So I suspect maybe the valves and the tuner are a little bit low emission or something like that. Because the set was obviously getting overrun for years so the valves are probably a little bit tired. But um, there we go. So that's the uh, the Pi TV there. And that's what we're getting for first light. So I'm very happy with that. I'm not going to get around to doing any more with this for another little while, but um, it won't fit on the bench for the start. But um, we'll definitely try and uh, tidy it up a bit. The cabinet's very rough as well. It's, it's, it's had a hard life. You can see there, with, I think it's had a fall at some stage, because we can see one of the struts inside is cracked, so it has a bang there. So I think it might have got thrown into a skip at some stage. However... That's the Pi TV. I hope this hasn't been too boring for y'all. I also want to thank everyone for joining me here because we just uh, smashed the 500 subscriber barrier there recently. So uh, thank you all very much and uh, I'll see you in the next one which will be very soon. Take care for now. Bye bye.